Portugal. So it seems that we have Brambo is switching oh, to And they are now. winning in, so uh, we have a game, people. This actually, is, uh... it uh, it was quite a kind of fast. I mean, uh, just 10 minutes waiting. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this will most likely be a water mirror then, I would assume. Unless Brambo yeah. does some crazy A strats with like 10 10 fast fortress <laughs> petard rush or something. <laughs> yeah, 10 10 fast fortress petard. So, Chrissy, give us your famous introduction, please. <laughs> um, uh oh. Wait. Okay, never mind. My Age of Empires 3 did not crash. So, yes, this is, of course, as I said, the. The ESOC Insight uh, Production something something yearly New Year's tournament round of 16. That's about all I remembered. And in yeah. the bottom left of the map, in the color green, we have Gug Zero ST 7 playing as <laughs> Japan. And his opponent in the top right of the map, in the color blue, is the Velo Hunt himself, Mr. Bramboy. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And we have, of course, Indonesia. So a very water-heavy map. You see a lot of water and not so a lot of land. So we're going to see a Chrissy favorite type of game, I guess. Uh, yes, I absolutely love this map. It's excellent. <laughs> Plenty of places yeah. to hide, villagers. I mean, to um, <laughs> explore. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I like those small islands here. I mean, you can camp with one, two villagers and just bore out your opponent and do the crazy playstyle. <laughs> or you could actually do something like real players try to do. Oh, and, <laughs> and yeah, Bramboy pointing it out in the old chat, there are indeed Mamelukes in the saloon. Hmm. That, of course, could be very interesting for him, I guess. For both players, Go that's... Uh... Yeah, and of yeah, course, Bram Boy right. singing the Dutch um, national anth anthem. <laughs> yeah, okay, I never saw that. So, hmm. well, it's kind of being creative, I guess. <laughs> it should be costing a, a little bit of. APM, I mean, I would I sing along, but I'm not Dutch, so. <laughs> okay, I, I can yeah. translate. Actually, he is saying. Um, Wilhelmus of Nassau, which is a person, uh, yeah. is from German blood, something along those lines. Uh, my fatherland, uh, I will be faithful to until the death. A prince of orange, am I free something something? <laughs> and then the so king of Hispaniola, I have always honored. Yeah, that's nice. And ghost got housed a little bit here. His uh, shrine went not up in time. Yeah, it can be sometimes a problem with Japan. You are maybe a bit late with the console, and then your explorers are searching for treasures, and then you remind yourself, of like, hey, I need to build a shrine. <laughs> and, Ooh, we and we have a contention for our... the 19 oh, wood here. Oh, no contention. Bramboy yeah, Bramboy just it. takes it. Yeah. That was both so, the stunts from uh, the Japanese player, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Both tankers were stunned. And uh, the crack shot from the European, the Portuguese guy there. Yeah, 90 wood. It's, yeah, better take it than leave it to Japan because it's basically a free shrine. So, yeah, 90 it wood is a free really shrine with having the cam come in. So. And Ghost needs to so, be a bit careful here with his uh, explorer. And we do see yeah, that Chikunius is the hits. first card for Bramboy. Yeah, so Bramboy is gonna do a little bit of water stuff there. Unless it's, of and... course, uh, a ruse, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and the Japan player does not have the mortar range card in H4, and Bramboy does have it, so... If it does so go the... to Industrial, I think Portuguese might be in a favorable position here. Warring States, now that's a card. Wow, this Japan deck is very interesting. Look at his yeah, H3 actually, yes. cards, though. That is extremely greedy. Yeah. No yeah, 1,000 coin. Yes, like, no uh, 1,000 coin. And just a lot of upgrade cards. Yeah. Could it be, could it be that this... I don't know. 
what would he do with that? I mean, he has four mill cards. Yeah, that's a four lot. Five, that's, he actually does have five yaks, hard. which is really nice for him. He can put those yeah. on his shrines. Well, actually, he needs, yeah. he needs to get this one to his base, but, you know. Yeah, or, or he could build a shrine there. <laughs> a shrine for the yak. <laughs> yeah, at some point he has to build shrines all over the map, and I think the map is not so hunt-heavy that he can... Where is Bromboys? Do... Ah, there it is, the Katamaran. Oh, and it does have a unit in it, so um, he might just bring his explorer to one of the other islands to search for cows and treasures. Yeah, he will find cows just in the north and the south side of the map, so... Yeah, Explorer going to discover this pretty small island. It's going to be pretty disappointed, poor guy. I mean, <laughs> wasting time, taking a bath there. Oh, actually, I think he might well, be going for this. You think? It's in rage? I don't think it's in rage. No, but he can use his Katamaran to lure them in yeah. rage. Yeah. That or he be. just realized his mistake. That's also possible. That could be too. Nope, nope. He's trying to so, go for the, for the sharks. Yeah. Let's see if there's a crack shot here. Uh, not yet. No, he's just gonna do it. Oh, the explorer got <laughs> by the shark. <laughs> Whoa, those sharks are attacking land, guys. That's that's kind of that's kind of fun. I so feel like Bram Boy might have, not be uh, too familiar with how you do this strategy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's not so used oh, to shark hunting. Hit. Oh, so. that hurts so much. I think a 75 <laughs> damage. Yeah, if his explorer dies there, that's gonna be yeah. He's not going to be happy about that. In the meantime, he's got aged up, all set up pretty well. Coastal town center. And, yeah, and he, yeah. he just gives up on the shark plan. Yeah, going to get started. Look at how many dogs yeah. are going down for Bramboy, though. He already has two up, and he's putting down a third one over here. Yeah, just those dogs are very, boats. very widespread. Why Why would he spread them so far? Uh, probably four more map vision. I'm even putting down one here yeah. as well. I guess he wants yeah, to control map. these uh, these small chokes. Just the chokes points, exactly, exactly. I think too. He probably gonna do that. And, and no the meantime, water for the Japan player just yet. Yeah, did he send? No, he didn't. No, he just shipped four villagers first. This is very interesting. Normally, Japan players want to ship six hundred wood as their first card yeah. you know, to get out uh, barracks, a market, some upgrades, a couple of extra shrines. But just yeah, shipping four villagers maps. straight away. On water maps, they like also go for the three sh fishing boats from the consulate, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of yeah. Those haven't been sent yet so. either. No. He is so, getting yeah. a lot of market upgrades. So he already has the second tier for food, the first tier for coin, and uh, civil servants is coming in right now. Second. <coughs> 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 I'm sorry. No problem for that. Second four <laughs> villager shipment has arrived now for Japan, so. Pretty greedy, yeah. Uh, but he could do that all, all. He could do it on water. I think. Yeah, it is paying off though. Like even though Brambo has quite a bit of docks up for now, Japan is ahead in eco. But that is going to not last very long. Yeah, I mean he has all his market upgrades now. I mean he has uh, the two food upgrades, the two gold upgrades, and the one uh, upgrade that makes every upgrade everything. Civil servant, yeah. And he is getting Imperial exactly. Bureaucracy right now as well, so he will have every market so, upgrade there is. Yeah. Whereas Bramboy only minutes, has so. Gangsa. So even though they are even and Bramboy is going to be ahead relatively soon, the actual economic output is still slightly in favor of Japan just because of the strength of those market upgrades. Exactly, yeah. But yeah, he does yeah. not have a lot of time here because Bramboy is going to catch up in Eco relatively soon. Just yeah, because Brambo of how many docks he has. basically in Fortress now, so we see he's uh, he has uh, 1,000 gold already in his bank and uh, oh, basically 1,000. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, it's not even in a very bad spot. I mean, he has a little bit of line of sight. Maybe he would have preferred it, I think, near the barracks in the town center, so he could see units in production. But I think, yeah. It's still and a I don't kind... think that Japan is actually intending to follow Portuguese to Fortress just yet. He was saving up, but I believe he queued up some units. Yeah, he queued up some Ashigarus, yes, so... exactly. Yeah, we'll see about that, so... 
And there is three fishing boats, most likely from the consulate, yes. Yeah, I think so. So, those five Ashigaru, what are those guys gonna do? Uh, so probably meantime, pick off this one villager that's in range of his shrines, so he knows it's there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that could be... So worth it. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, is a heady but, uh, community now, though. Even though Japan has more market upgrades, just eight yeah. villagers. The market but upgrades can't Japan... compensate for that. Japan is ready to age up now, so he's gonna follow him pretty soon, I guess. I mean, he has the resources. He's not. Oh, and he didn't queue up his next batch of Ashigaru, so that will allow him to go to Fortress right now, in exchange for having a little bit less presence. I'm not sure yeah. if I agree with this wonder placement. It's a bit lackluster. I understand that yeah. he doesn't want to build it too close to the shore for obvious reasons. But that's just strange. You're kind of blocking your own barracks, so... Yeah, he has exactly. taken down one of these docks, so the the choke point control for Bramboy, on this side of the map at least, is temporarily gone. Although yeah. I don't think that there's going to be any warships for Japan anytime soon, so... Yeah, and still, uh, he has a nice vision of the whole map, Bramboy is. I mean, he has oh, yeah, uh, his cut sure. around here. He has uh, do docks all on the whole coast. And wow, I don't there agree with this first fortress time. shipment of Mr. Brambo. You do not need five Dragoons here. There is no reason to ship that as your first fortress card. Yeah. Although I, I guess there's not that much else for him to ship now that I look at it. The refrigeration yeah, maybe, I, I guess. Know. I don't know. But five yeah. Dragoons is just... It feels awkward. I mean, the frigate could have done a little bit more again. I, mean, I guess it's because he's wanting to go Casador, so he needs dragoons to protect his. Um, yeah. His Casador from, from the potential from... Mamelukes from the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> this is EP, of course, so the Japan player cannot make these Mamelukes until he is in the industrial age. And let's see what's being made by the Japan player. He is switching to Yumi, so. Ooh, and the, Ooh, the, and the miners villages. from Japan getting caught a bit here. Yeah, that's... Yeah, fortunately, how many how many died? I think three villagers, something like that. Yeah, and so, he is fighting with his villagers here to yeah, two villagers get his down. Uh, army to go away. And now he has Fortress himself. And the problem with the composition yeah. that Mr. Bramboy is going for is that the Yumi archers just counted it so hard. Yeah, and those Ashigar guys apparently did get four villagers from Bombay, so... Uh, oh, yeah, and I, it seems like did I did miss a raid, more villagers than, yeah. I was already happens. wondering, like, wait, when did Bromboy lose four villagers? But I guess some Ashigaris just ran past and raided a bit. Uh, that's, of course, one, I don't of, know one of the most obnoxious things when fighting against Japan. Like, randomly there is going to be, like, a batch of five Ashigaris in your base killing your yeah, villagers, exactly. and they just run so fast. <laughs> In the worst case, they make you run all over the map. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, that's gonna be annoying. So, in the meantime, there is no safe spot for Ghost to gather gold, it seems. So... No, but his veteran Yumi is about to finish, and that is yeah. going to change everything. Wow, and he ships Terrorist Hillsides as his first H3 card. I can't even begin to explain just how greedy and wrong this is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at his deck, you see he has Royal Mint. Why would he not just ship Royal Mint first? He does not need this rice paddy. Yeah, exactly. And he still has yeah, 3,000 food thinks... in his cherry orchard. Yeah, maybe he thinks because of the gold, but then it's not the right shipment for that. So, no. yeah, I don't know that. You do not uh, want to gather a coin from a rice paddy. Early, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but in the worst case, I mean, he has no safe mine to gather from. He has no shapes. So remember that what? he had 3,000 food left in his cherry orchard? It seems he just like somehow mined that completely empty in that short amount of time. I guess he just put every single yeah. villager on it. Well, and now he does yeah, have yeah. Royal Mint, so... Yeah, I guess he really wants the coin. Uh, yeah, I do like I this card, so. this is a smart choice. He needs to be worried about these two organ guns, though. And he can see them now because they are killing his shrine. Yeah. And well, I I don't know about the Japanese guy here. I mean, yeah, as you said, I don't understand the last two shipments. I do feel yeah, he's like smorely getting a stable, though. He is going to need some Naginata riders here. 
Does he have yeah. the Nagi HP card? Oh, yeah, he does. That's very important for him. Now, Way of the Bow finally arriving. Way of the Bow probably should have been his first card in H3. Followed by Nagi yeah. HP. So he can go Nagi Nata, Rider, plus Yumi Archer, which is just an extremely powerful unit composition for Japan. The Nagis become so tanky once they get that 30% HP card. It is absolutely monstrous. And then your Yumi yeah. Archers can yeah. just rain down death from above. Let's see if he can get this castle off. And no, the, the Organ Guns got a volley of them. Probably a second volley as well before this castle goes yeah, down. Yeah, castle is down, so... Yeah, it's gonna get cancelled here. And yeah. this is problematic because he really this is struggles his own this. income. Yeah, he is struggling getting gold. I mean, he is on 51 gold now and he has no place to get from. Besides so... his rice paddy, of course. Although at the moment yeah, he does not really but need no coin, but... He could go full Yumi, that's true. But then... He should yeah. really switch his shrines to coin though, if he wants to do anything coin related, like getting this table yeah. up and running. Exactly. His 180 shrine population is gonna gather him like a yeah, decent amount of gold. Not so fast though, so... I mean, I guess he could gather coin from here, he knows it's there. Yeah, that's true. Why isn't he trying? Maybe he's afraid because it's too far away. Afraid from a ride or something like that. Maybe it's yeah, too close to the shore. I don't know. And yeah, in the meantime, Bravo has an insane uh, economy. I mean, something else. Oh, and if you look at tax research or tax completed, that Bramboy has been catching up in market a bit, and he also got the arsenal and got the um, yeah the, the, the ranged cavalry the upgrade, and also veteran hussars. Exactly. So we are probably going to see a hussar switch from Bramboy here together with the dragoon combat card. This is going to be problematic for uh, Ghost. Yeah, I mean, with all the the Yumi, com the, the the basically full Yumi composition from Ghost, uh, the switch to Ho to Hussar from Brambo is kind of uh, yeah, I think it's understandable. I mean, oh for sure, he has not nothing that can really deal with Yumi in the actual composition. I mean, uh, Dragoon get wrecked, I guess, by Yumi's and Casador are not very very good against them, so. Hussar is what no, we want. No, are good against Yumi, it's just that Yumi are really, really good. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, still, Yumi has that uh, range resistance and... Uh, so yeah. do the Cassadors, though. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's true. They actually have more ranged resist, but Yumi just do a lot of damage and have more range. Yeah, they have the 26 range attack with 20 range and those... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Cassadors are only shooting with 17, so yeah. It's not really good to to use Cassador against the Umis, When he shipped the Cherry Cassador. Orchards now. I'm not sure why he shipped the Cherry Orchards. He still has a lot of berry bushes just out on the map that he can gather from. In general, I think uh, Ghost is shipping not ideal cards here. He did not need his Terraced Hillsides. He hasn't even used his Rice Paddy yet. Yeah, and I mean... Way of the Bow. Okay, I agree with Way of the Bow. Maybe before the two uh, other mill or Rice Paddy shipments. So Ooh, the pump, these Raccoons going goes. down is actually somewhat annoying for Brahma because now yeah. the Nagi... But look at those Yumi yeah, coming out. Yeah, the very, from the back nice. going to and the from the back, so... Yeah, this is gonna be very... Like the Organ Guns are doing a bit strange as well, though, but I yeah, think the Brambo just has to do like stuff here. Left and right, and he, but he managed with... Nah, uh, he, he barely lost one, and... Uh, yeah, Japan military count is gonna get uh, basically zero now, and... This is a little bit unfortunate too, he uh, a group one Ashigaru with the Naginata, so reinforcements are coming in late, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think those reinforcements would have made much of a difference though, Brambo just no, had way no, more no, stuff no, there. Exactly, he even exactly. had counter infantry I mean... rifling, although I'm not sure how much that mattered in that fight, I don't think there were that many Ashigarus there. But yeah, Brambo's army just had way more upgrades on them, and he also yeah, just had I more mean... stuff. At the moment, uh, the economy of Rambo is so much superior with all those sea fishing and uh, whale fishing for gold and all stuff like that. And the military lead is just very, very overwhelming at the moment. So, yeah, Ghost has to make something happen, but yeah, it's constantly losing shrines now. It's being confined in this part of the map. Yeah, actually, he ran out of that gold too at the moment. So, yeah. It's gonna yeah, be very it's hard for him. Definitely not looking good for him. And this seven villager shipment that he just shipped, that should have been his first card in H3, now that I think about it. Yeah. I mean that could have boosted his economy very hard and or or at least harder as it did now, because he uh, frankly, the though 
those two mill upgrades. I mean, he 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 didn't even have a mill. So two shipments for I don't don't understand. Well, Royal Mint also works on normal mines, so. Yeah. Okay. We can agree with that, but. It's still a ship. Yeah, he should have just shipped seven villagers spot. twice, or seven villagers way of the bow. Or maybe just straight up upgrade yeah. cards from the get go if he was intending to do some sort of timing push or something of those lines. But not still, the uh, status hill side nonsense. Up, yeah, setting up a new base here, a new nice new looking town center here, chopping a lot of wood. And yeah, he still has a decent army, he can defend with them. And, yeah, uh, I think Bramboy might actually be a bit too scared here because if he gives Japan yeah. enough time, like Ghost is certainly not out of this game. He is no, Japan, no, not yet. and this water is not gonna last forever. I mean, there's a lot of fish, but not infinite. Exactly, exactly. So he has to. He knows he's ahead. Oh, and this is gonna hurt. Yeah, and there is the Nagi HP card, so these Naginatas now have 450 hit points. Yeah, they are. They still don't want to fight Dragoons, though, but there's not that many Dragoons left, actually. And this could be a problem for Bramboy. But he is going. Yeah, never mind. He's going to Industrial. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely exactly fine. So. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he still has a decent number of Hussar left. They don't do that well against so beefy Naginata, but they can still hold on. Yeah, the Hussar, I think there's actually too many ashes for the... For the Hussar to do something, yeah, right? Yeah, he actually but, uh... switched to a Naginata plus Ashi composition. The problem is his yeah. Nagi were just busy running around instead of actually hitting the Casadors, which yeah, is a problem. Yeah, another problem is the gold, right? I mean, he yeah. has no gold. He can't, I mean, he's And his shrines are on with eight food, villagers. wow. Yeah, and he's floating so much food, I mean... Yeah. And he's actually gathering coins from rice buddies now, but only one of them, the other one is still on food, so miss yeah, macroing still, uh, quite a bit here. The, the coin count is very, very low, so yeah, he has to make something happen. I'm curious to see what he's gonna do. He also only has eight villagers on this bottom rice paddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a Ghost is just miss macroing a bit here, unfortunately. Yeah, and here comes the industrial age. So we are gonna see those veteran uh, dragoons there. Hinete are gonna rape everything. Yeah, with 20 Hume, range. Well, actually, I think it's like 19 range yeah. or 18 range in the patch. I don't quite remember. But yeah, straight away we see the the guard units incoming. Yeah, I mean, it's the right thing to do, ne? isn't it? Because yeah, Kanto the Naginata and. Um, Ashigaru kind of he needs to get these ashes in melee with these Casadors, actually. That might enable him to do something here. Yeah. But in the meantime, it's Ooh, just a decent batch of Nagis coming in here, but Grumboy is smartly populating his Dragoon point. count. Yeah. yeah, a few Yamabushi Kamikaze there trying to hit a few Dragoons. But, yeah, not achieving that much. Well, I mean. Considering Naginata how far work, Ghost and... is, this fight is going reasonably well yeah. for him, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Especially now that the 20 range goons are in, yeah, it's 19 range. Yeah. And of course, these Cassadors with counter and infantry rifling are just shredding through these Ashigarus. Another Rice Paddy for Ghost in a really awkward position. Sending 7 villagers for the second time now, but... Yeah, and the GG and he comes does out resign, here. Yeah. yeah. So well, we saw game Wait, wait, speaking one. of Miss Macroing, Bramboy's macro wasn't exactly <laughs> ideal in this game either. He was floating a lot of resources as well. But yeah, he just had a pretty big economic lead in the mid game. And Ghost exactly, took a yeah. pretty poor fight in this bottom side of the map where the Mamelukes just arrived and his entire Yumi mass just got shredded by the organ guns and the Mamelukes and a couple of the Hussars. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that would have been, I, I think if that would have happened to me, I mean, I, I would have auto resigned because I kind of rage quit every time. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it w should have been very discouraging, I guess. I mean, yeah, that army melted so fast. But well, we, we saw an interesting gang, nevertheless. I mean, uh, we had no walls <laughs> on Indonesia. It's not something you would expect, actually. But yeah. Yeah, if you look at the military population graph, you can just see it at one fight. And Ghost just loses everything, and from there on, he's just struggling to recover. But like, if you look yeah, at the all I mean, resources gathered, it actually 
isn't that bad until about two thirds into the game where Bromboy really gets ahead. Like yeah, early on, I mean, Japan actually gathered more because those market upgrades, as I said, are just so exactly, strong. exactly, are, are paying off very fast. And uh, but then at, uh, in two thirds in the game, I mean, uh, Japan had no place where to gather. I mean, where should he have gathered coins? So he had to switch to paddies. That is not ideal for sure. And yeah, basically running his villagers around the map is not going that great to your economy. Oh well. So now we give power to the people again, and uh, you can vote for the uh, next map that has to be played. And we'll see what's going on. We already had uh, Chris's favorite map, so we yeah. Let's see what more vote. water maps are there. Everyone voting for Tar Desert. Never mind. I, I guess it's gonna be Tar Desert. <laughs> oh, Tar Desert. Tar Desert. Tar Desert. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's the one with the, the weird drawings, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Tar Desert, it's the very... Oh, there. Ah, no, no, okay, yeah, that's... It's a good-looking map. It's kind of big map, so... Let's see. Let's see, oh. what other maps do I want to see today? Bayakar of Fornia, of course, that's just a great map. Baja California is nice, yeah. I, like I had that. some bays I also, think... very nice. Why isn't Indochina in this map pool? Uh, I did like I did like uh, Herald Island because it's yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, uh, there are a few tactical elements that you can add to the game in that map. I like that. Yeah, it's going to be Tar uh, Desert because Indonesia was, of course. Uh, played already so they cannot play on that anymore yeah yeah so people if you vote please uh, keep in mind that uh, you can't vote for the same map twice that just does not work <laughs> so do not even bother do that and yeah what maps did we not see I think uh, yeah Gran Cajo <laughs> I do not even know how to spell that it's something I never saw and Florida would be something that that could be fun to see. Oh, nice! The host cancelled the game, so <laughs> so we have Tar Desert the map. Did you say? Yes. Exactly. Very nice. Tar Desert it is. Of course, it is a BO5, so we have five potential games. It is currently 1-0 to zero in favor of the Velo Hunt, Mr. Bramboy. Yeah, of course. Dutch guys are on the lead in the moment, at the moment, so... So what's going on? Are I am giving game? Mr. Bramboy the map. The map. Ah, okay. He does not have the map. Yeah, it kind of, it should be in the, in the. I mean, if we play on EP, it should be, everyone should have it, isn't it? Uh, this is one of those new maps that you have ah, to download so separately. Yeah, I kind of did it, but it never worked, so I don't know. Well, I just cast. <laughs> sometimes and then it happens that I get the random yeah one. exactly <laughs> same, same thing here so <laughs> so we see we saw a pretty solid uh, Portuguese play though from brown boys and uh, yeah curious to see what civilizations he picks next there is a big thumbs up I mean uh, we do not have the civilization switch anymore, so Brown Boy has to pick one civilization. And uh, he has to pick first. So he cannot repeat, so no more ports for him, unless the game's going to end in a tie. Uh, 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 there is a tie-breaking game. Can't end in a tie. How does a tie-breaking game even work? Yeah, I mean, uh, if it's going to be... a uh, fifth game oh like they, that yes. they will be okay. yeah exactly they will be two two even and that's gonna be a tie break
So, and can you explain to me how the poll thing works exactly? So, does is there a, an amount of time where people can vote? So, like yeah, I, I basically start the poll, and then there is uh, I don't know. I think it's two minutes or something. Yeah. Uh, it's one minute, and in that one minute, um, you can vote. I think I'm supposed to put it to two minutes, but I'm lazy and I forgot. Yeah, I mean, one minute should be enough if you announce it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you no, if you announce it, that's not gonna work because of the thirty second delay. So, <laughs> yeah, it makes things complicated. <laughs> Just announce it in chat. No, but we have Tar Desert. Once again, nice map. I like the looks of it, and I bet it has the resources on it. Some hunts and do. TP or no TP, there is going to be. Ah, they have to take a look at the map first. So, okay. They want to know if there is TP or no TP. Uh, there is no TP on Tar no. Desert. There is a native one in the middle, though, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that could be, but could they be Sufi or something like that, I guess? Yeah, I think it's like Sufi. Might also be the monk guys, I don't remember. Yeah. Native guys. TPs aren't exactly my strongest point. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are a lot of them, and yeah, it's always written the map, and it's not that they are very, very used that much, I guess. We saw them, where do we saw, yeah, the duck game, the game duck played versus Bobabu, we saw some Yes, net, he went stuff. for the Nootka. Nootka, Nootka club. Man. And what was and the other thing fun. again, the, the something something rifleman? <laughs> Yeah, the those Indian guy, or <laughs> Native American guy. Uh, yeah. How much you or whatever? I don't remember what they were called. How? Yeah. So Bromboy has to pick civilizations first. So. Let's make him hurry up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it seems he <laughs> seems he's thinking about taking uh, Great Britain. <laughs> oh, apparently Bramboy's mama is watching the stream. Hi, Bramboy's mama. <laughs> Hello, mother of Bramboy. <laughs> I, I kind of don't believe that, but you never know, actually. Uh, so. But just in case, who uh, are the people? Who are you? Ah, yeah, okay. Schön Zeit, Herr Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> so it does look like Brambo is thinking about using the Brits. Yeah, it does look like he's hovering over it for the moment. But this half on to yeah. very serious <laughs> matters. Um, it is extremely important. That whenever you see Bramboy, you say this. Bram is a veile hond. Bram is a veile hond. Excellent. Uh, probably, what does it mean? Something uh, it like... It means Bram a... is a filthy dog. Yeah, something It is something hunt, that Jerome has told hunt. me to always say when I meet Bram. So I am faithfully <laughs> following that order. Yeah, uh, you were a good friend, I see that. <laughs> ah, yes, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently uh, those people uh, like to get their 10 minutes break to choose civilizations. They probably are uh, going to eat some pie, going to drink some water. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Give me a fucking break, he says. Yeah. And of course, he needs so, to tell his mother to watch the stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's picking a civilization. Did he green up in Britain, actually? I didn't. Um, I, I... I'm not sure. He hasn't confirmed this. I'm going to ask him. 
Yeah, if he locked in, he should green. So, no, I don't know. <laughs> Bram boy with the well, <laughs> <laughs> with the shameless uh, advertising. Yeah, advertising. <laughs> Then green. So we not confused. Yeah, well, Brits, Brits versus Russia. Hmm, interesting. On Tar Desert. So, yeah. Ooh, and Ghost hovering over Russia here. Yeah. That could be that could be fun, actually. But yeah, I mean. They, if Ghost agrees, they have to agree. So, oh, seems he wants to do India instead. Yeah. Well. Ah, and just as the game starts, one of the people whispered me, probably saying hello to the stream. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Now, I mean, I can lean back and relax and wait for your famous introduction to take place. So <laughs> I'm looking forward for that. Let me just update the scoreboard first, of course. That's very professional of you. Thank you. So <laughs> on the Tar Desert in the ESO inside production facility barracks in the New Year's newly year yearly tournament. There is a game being played, and it's the round of 16. And we have Mr. Bramboy in the top right of the map, playing British in the color blue. While his opponent in the bottom left side of the map, in the color red, Ghost007, playing India in the color red. And I think I already said his color, but I'll say it again. Yeah, I mean, it's so red that you have to say it twice at least. Uh, and it's Divu Dasi, well... we were both wrong. They have chakrams, wow. so probably not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, okay. I want to see them. <laughs> I don't know them that well, so little bit of treasures, picking up some small things, though. Yeah, hundred food, food in total for India here. Both of these treasures yeah. combined that he's picking yeah. up, which is going to be pretty nice for That's his age up. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, if he's gonna opt for something like. Uh, Early color push that is gonna speed him up. Let's see if I mean, either of them has picked decks already. Yeah, both players have picked a deck. Uh, both of them seem incredibly standard. Nothing too strange about the Brit deck. And the India deck just seems quite standard as well. The 700 foot is a bit peculiar, I guess. I don't think that's a card that India usually has in the deck. But other than that, it looks incredibly standard. I guess yeah, 25 I mean, Tiger Claws in H4 is also not something I see very often. <laughs> yeah, but it's one of those cards that you put in, so you have it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you never know when you need 25 Tiger yeah. Claws in H4. <laughs> you can always use that. <laughs> I mean, that 700 food could, uh, I don't know, if he wants to stay colonial, he could uh, pull out a little bit more of units with that and speed things up. So could be useful. We'll see what he's up to. I mean, what should he do with India versus the Brit guy? Brown boy I finding mean. a very nice wood treasure here, though. That's going to be great as British. He can just get another manor house, perhaps. Yeah. Depending on how much wood he wants to chop extra, of course. Yeah. But, oh, but 90 uh, wood for India as well. Even better. Even better. So, Both of these Sifts absolutely love one. wood treasures. So it's 140 boot. I mean, that's that's basically one and a half villager for uh, for India. So yeah, Ghost nice. definitely has the advantage here in age one. Just so many good yeah. treasures for him. But seems that he's waiting for his stun to recharge. I guess uh, he should probably let his explorers heal each other if he wants to wait around this treasure. Yeah. <laughs> And we see, maybe Bramboy goes and see it, and we have a little bit of... Ah, no. Ooh, we need to be careful with this worried. elephant here. If Bramboy catches that one, <laughs> it could totally yeah, go yeah, down. Yeah. But they just go past each other. 
relatively unharmed. And we do see some villagers going forward, so we are most likely to see a forward aggro. Oh, yeah, but look at this. So... Brown boy already in position. Oh. Let's see if he spots it. Does he go back yeah, in time? Yeah, but he misses it. He misses it. He misses yeah, and it. the aggro. Do... Oh, wait, the no! villagers are also being what? weird. Oh, my. That's that's unfortunate. He's losing so much time now. He, he, he had it. Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, he absolutely had it. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, now he has <laughs> Okay, now, now it... Now it, it they, oh, th they this is the problem. Finally. If you send two villagers to make a building, they won't start building until both villagers are at like opposite side of the buildings. It is really important that when you do something like this, that you task only a single villager to actually lay down the foundation. Yeah. And the second one you just right click to go along with that villager and you don't task him to the building until the foundation is down. Otherwise yeah, this exactly. will happen and they just derp around walking on the foundation. That's a lot of lost time that uh, goes Yeah, I here. mean what it was it was basically 30 seconds. I mean, okay, he's building with two villagers and uh, that means he's going to get up pretty fast, I guess. But still, I mean, British will be aged up before, so yeah, luckily for him, it was not some sort of 10-10 hyper-aggressive plan he had going yeah. on. Because yeah, exactly. then he would have because... basically lost already. Yeah, I don't know if it's that bad. Yeah, it's now... Okay, I can I can give you that. It's very bad. I mean, he sacrifices a lot of economy if he goes there. There's also a lot of food and, uh, just laying on the floor here, rotting away. Which is yeah, I mean, something you would prefer to avoid. Yeah, those guys are, are pretty dead. And gonna disappear soon. <laughs> Those hunts are them. indeed pretty dead. <laughs> <laughs> Both yeah, players getting market upgrades. Nothing too strange there. Let's see where the tower goes down for British. Oh, very defensive actually, because the elephant was in position to. Uh, yeah, and getting a little bit of nice damage already on the tower. So, uh, no. so well. India aged up, British aged up too, so let's see. It seems like uh, a little bit of colonial pressure from the India guy because of the aggressive Agra fort there and... Yeah, he's also only Oops. getting his first tier of food upgrades on the market, so it does seem like he wants to at least put on some pressure early on. And yeah. there's probably some sepoy in the queue as well, yeah. Yeah, let me see the units in queue with this amazing UI, units in queue. Oh, yeah, Sepoy is in queue and Longbow. So, Brambo is going to for... Uh... That is yeah, very I risky, mean... actually, because obviously elephants are pretty strong. And if they get on top of the Longbow yeah. and get a single stomp off, the Sepoy can just walk up and wreck the Longbow. Oh, but we actually see a yeah, wall going up. Yeah, but it's a wall. So, I mean... It's gonna be a pretty greedy play from Brown Boy. I mean, a lot of wood chopping it at the moment. Of course, his manners build villages, so all those wood I'm pretty are sure there's a villagers. hole in the wall. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And there we go. Ele yeah. No elephants. Oh, I guess he just wants to go for the villagers instead of going for the longbow. Yeah, two villagers down. He should really toss these elephants on the longbow from the get go. Because now his elephants are actually getting blocked by the sepoy. Yeah, but he can't kind that well with the longbow, so... Yeah, now both the elephants are dead, and this is problematic. Although he does have a flank going on here with the sepoy. Ooh, and a yeah. batch of longbow popping out. And now these longbow have to run away from the base, and this is kind of annoying for Bromboy, actually. Yeah, I mean, longbows are good versus uh, musketeers, but, uh, I mean, they can't hit and run that well. So, when you chase them down, when you come in close, you can, I mean... Look at, he, he didn't lose a lot of sepoy and... Uh, yeah, and the, the moment Brambo getting... turns it out to shoot, these sepoy are gonna get in exactly. range to get a volley off as well. And that's the problem with Longbow, they exactly. just don't guide very efficiently. Longbow only become good against musketeers in large numbers. In low numbers, the musketeers exactly. just catch up to them while yeah. they do their firing animation and slaughter them. Yeah, and if they can stand and just shoot, they are gonna pin nail those musketeers, they are gonna take them down so fast, but here, uh, yeah, I mean, look at the units lost. Oh, and I really like this 4 Sauer shipment, this is very smart by Ghost. Sauers yeah. are exactly what he needs. Yeah, but I mean, 3 sepoys lost and 8 longbows lads, so, yeah, that's 
For sure. He has nothing to do with these sepoys except tower and DC fire. And just look at this sepoy mass. I feel like this is going to yeah. be a very quick game in favor of Ghost. I don't see yeah, how Drumboy can hold this. It's going look to be at so the, devastating for him. Yeah, and there was a, a longbow mad batch that wasn't that great. I mean, Minutemen coming, villagers putting out, of course, help him defend, but all oh, those sepoys are gonna. Yeah, I mean... I hear a lot of women screaming, and the only yeah. woman unit in the game is, of course, the villager. So this is not yeah, good news for Brown Boy. And, He's probably gonna hold her, but look at units lost. Yeah, yeah, seven villagers gone down. Birding longbow. The elephants are back up as well again, wrecking the middlemen, and yeah, Brown yeah. Boy does and here GG. comes the GG. Yeah, we have a very quick second game yeah. in favor of Ghost, and the series is tied up one to one. So uh, we might be in for a very tense series here, which is, of course, always nice to see. That is, of course, nice to see. I mean, yes. Uh... <laughs> well, if you look at all resources gathered, you can just see when those sepoy hit the base. Yeah. The the, the, the resource line for Brumboy just goes completely flat, and then the the longbow kite them out of the base, and he can get it again. But then, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And of course, the military population I mean, graph, it, it's not even close. <laughs> exactly. It, there were there were too many Sepoy too fast in his base. And uh, yeah, he just couldn't stand with, with the longbow. So, yeah. Nice game, though. Nice game. I mean, pretty fast, decisive. <laughs> Was it, I mean, think... If, if uh, Ghost would had lost all that time with uh, with the Wonder, he would have be even faster. So, yeah, hard stuff. So it's the voting on. Yeah, the voting is on. So beautiful people, go vote. Do it. Do it. I vote myself. What should I vote, Chrissy? What should I vote? Well, I voted on Hudson Bay. Oh, that's a nice map, but the problem is there's a lot of people voting on Indonesia, Indonesia, even though we cannot pick that map anymore. Please don't vote on Indonesia and Tar Desert. Those maps have been played already. Yeah, exactly. I vote on Manchak because I don't know what that is. Oh no, stupid me! No, Manchak. <laughs> <laughs> that was a kind of a fail. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> You can't always win. Vote 16. Thank you. Manchak. I don't know Manchak, so... Voting for the map is on the way. And do we have a winner yet? Do we have a winner yet? We don't. Do now, I actually updated the timer to the two minutes it's supposed to be. Yeah. That's nice. So we have more votes. It's going to be like better. <laughs> People wanting Bonnie Springs, of course, because then it's Bram Bonnie. Bram Bonnie, oh, yeah, that's okay. It's going to be on that <laughs> map for sure. <laughs> Bram Bonnie Springs. Oh, and the poll is closed, and Harold Island has won. Oh, nice. It's a nice map. I like it. I have never heard of this map, but it has a name Island in it, so I'm hoping there's water. Yeah, but you can't use it, so chill out. <laughs> I don't think I have this map. You don't? Yeah, I, 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 give, him, I give it to Bram. You have it? Yeah, I have it. I should have it. Oh. I'm gonna yeah. look if I have it, but I'm pretty sure I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a problem if we don't have the maps uh, that I have be a Harold Island, but I'm not sure if this one is UI compatible. Compatible. 
Yeah, well, I had a Herald Island, so okay, no problem. But if there is gonna be, I mean, I from the new ones, I just have Herald Island, Jebel Musa, and Tar Desert. So yeah, we'll see what's gonna happen. Some someone in the in the whole thing will have. I think I remember uh, Herald Island actually. Yeah, I, I played on that one with Aragon, and I got absolutely stomped because I forgot you can go beyond the Discovery Age. I, I just straight up <laughs> forgot to age up to Colonial, and then he was in my base with units, and I was like, wait, right! <laughs> oh, that's what I missed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds nice. Yeah, I hadn't played for like a year and a half, so I was just completely spaced out of the game. I was just having fun, like, making shrines, building villagers. <laughs> and then there was like, you know, two Falconets and 20 Pikemen in my base. Uh, like, okay, I did something wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, Herald Island, isn't that the... Yeah, I, I actually, I actually can't... At the time that I played on that map, there was a trade line, but you couldn't upgrade Stagecoach on it. And I kind of hope it's actually still like that, because I think that's a very interesting uh, concept. Feature. Having a trade line, yeah. but no Stagecoach possibilities. That could be interesting. I think the, the the whole ice stuff on the on the top left ish of the map that you can't build on. I think that's interesting too because he has a, a few herds there, a few gold mines, and uh, yeah, can be interesting. Interesting stuff can be going on, and it's a pretty short map, so you can see some harassment going on, and still it has natural walls. So I think it's a strategically. Could be a fun mod to watch, at least. I don't know about playing it, but we can watch, so it's not our problem. <laughs> so, and Harold Island it is. Ghost has to pick first. Eyes on top thing map. So well, pretty nice that um, Ghost did tie up series. So we gonna have some more time for Age of Empires. Hey. I need food. Oh, apparently Bamboo needs food. So, Chrissy, aren't yes. you watching cards today? <laughs> ah, no, no, Sorry, no watching cards. Yeah, 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 you, you used to watch cards if you... <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> do, do give us, to enlighten us on the very, very strange cards, but apparently we have already a civilization pick from Ghost. He's going to go France. Uh, vive la France. Uh, yeah, uh, I dislike this Sif pick because I despise French. I hate that Sif. Yeah, I know. You, you, you. Ah, uh, yeah. They are Sorry, overpowered. They build cavalry, and I don't know how to beat that. Sorry, I forgot about that. I ich jetzt spreche Deutsch ist gut. Deutsch civilization, yeah. Um, uh, Ching Chang Chong Wu Pain Ki Pang. <laughs> oh, exactly. That's what my mother used to say. Yeah, I very agree with that. <laughs> We have a game, ladies and gentlemen. No, that's kind of into Ooh, the... Oh, German style. against not... France. This used to be the matchup on the previous version of the patch. Yeah, but then both these the games days got where we were young. and no one played them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so I believe apparently... France has been picking up in popularity a bit again, now that people have uh, gotten used to the nerfs. Yeah, I mean... Oh, okay, we have toilet breaks. So apparently we have a matchup, and it is... Is it still German favorite? I, I don't think so, isn't it? I'm not sure. I mean, it is a TP map, but not really a I don't think really I've seen Germany map. played on the patch yet. 
Yeah, I saw it on the game. Hmm, I don't remember. Remember? Oh well, sad thing. <laughs> sad story. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> Drum boy gonna let us wait again, but well, of course he is the. Oh, I also I don't actually have the map yet. Ah oh, no, you still downloading it? Uh, it says unselected, so. Yeah, so you're still downloading it because it's kind of Herald Island. Uh, I'll to... just join again to be sure. Yeah. It still says. Oh hi, Chris. Actually. <laughs> Yeah, you have to download it. Yeah, but it didn't give me the message to download it, so... That's strange. Have you green? If you try to green? Yeah, I can't. Uh, that sucks. Yeah. Can you download? Yeah, I got the message now. Upgrade your ah, yeah, nice. Yes, I upgrade. Yeah! Oh, the town 48. Ah. I miss those. I don't have them. <laughs> oh, no, Duba. Oh, he's alive. <laughs> this I like a lot. This I like a lot. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Chrissy, very OP introduction approaching. <laughs> And I did download the map now, so let's go yeah. into game three of the Inside Productions New Year's Inside Tournament round of 16. I think I'm about correct. It's very yeah. close, at least. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Indeed, it is. Yeah, and you were very fast then. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Oh, and yeah, it's this map. I remember this one. Yeah, exactly. The In the ice. top right, in the color blue, we have Mr. Bramboy, the Veilehond, playing as Germany. <laughs> On this massive cliff island, something... S I, I don't know how they got up there. Because if you look, like there, there's absolutely no way they got up here unless they have like rope ladders or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but... On the, in the bottom left of this what should be totally inex inaccessible island, in the color red, Ghost007, playing as France. And very, they will fight nice. for this piece of desolate land that they shouldn't be able to get on. For reasons unknown. There's also a trade <laughs> route which is trading uh, this particular tree for this deer. Yeah, this is pretty amazing trade, actually. I mean, I would take the deer. <laughs> I don't understand the concept of this map, but who cares? Let's watch some units shoot other units and see who comes out on top. <laughs> exactly. That's what we like to do, basically, in watching Age of Empires. <laughs> who cares it's that like, the Chinese yeah. are in Siberia fighting against the British? Let's just yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> who needs logic in Age of Empires 3? Yeah, that's, that's kind of fun. So... What do we need then in Age of Empires 3? We need, uh, well, so round trading post sites, people disappearing. Yeah, He's it's actually funny, system. like the, the trading post has this circle-y thing that they can take, yeah, but they, the car doesn't actually use it. It just like goes into the circle and disappears. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's he's really an outlaw. I mean, he, he just ignores the circle and goes straight and then it's like, yeah, I don't care. And away he goes. So then, enough bullshit? No, not enough. But <laughs> There is never enough bullshit. <laughs> never enough bullshit, actually. So, yeah, we still have pretty standard stuff going on. So we could uh, go on with the bullshit. Chrissy, go on. <laughs> but well, we I'm, I'm just following this trade card because I want to see him just totally ignore the road. Yeah, that's kind of very, very badass of him. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. He, he's like a total hipster. He's like, I don't need a road. I go wherever I want. I don't give a crap. <laughs> exactly. 
I'm actually half exactly. expecting him to also just walk out of the island, but I don't think he's that <laughs> hipster. I wanted him to fall in the water. <laughs> ah, no, he, he stops but, just after the circle. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's so sad. Yeah. But yeah, thus far, very standard stuff, just three CDB. I would imagine the Settler Wagon shipment from Germany. Let's see if either of them has hunting dogs. Yes, French does have hunting dogs. Germany opted to not get it quite yet. Yeah, I mean, we kind of missed the start, so no, probably no 200 wood, because either way, that would have been a TP. No, but French did get a 40 wood. Oh, yeah, he, French got two 40 wood treasures. That's probably why he went for the hunting dogs. Yeah, okay. And yeah, there's yeah. the two settler wagons for Germany, just very standard. I'm also expecting both of them to probably get a trading post in transition. Also, I just noticed that this is a very pretty thing. Yeah, like uh, kind of a little bit of a temple stuff or going on. Yeah, this is, this is like a place where you could see Tomb Raider, like walking around doing her <laughs> Tomb Raider -y things. Yeah, on this small space, like on a playground or yeah, something And then like the that. French are like the mercenaries that are fighting her. While the Germans are like some random cult that wants to raise a demon or whatever the hell goes on in Tomb Raider stories. <laughs> and, then, and then you have yeah. like random polar bears that are the first mission you do. And you find like a shotgun which you use to kill the deer because you need food. <laughs> but yeah, on to more serious stuff. The game is actually reaching a point where stuff happens. Both players as expected. Building a TP during transition. Exactly. And... Trading with the hipster Ooh, this guy. This scout so... is in a very nice position to... Uh, See a possible five hussar batch closing in. Yeah, that's that's actually right. The French player, of course, doing the same with Hishkow, just looking in the German base, seeing what he can find. Oh, and just look at how much coin is being gathered by Bromboy here. Yeah, very commonly heavy, actually. What could that mean? I mean, more market upgrades coming in from French. He has all tier three upgrades now. Yeah, oh, that's... And we have a pause. Yeah, what's going on? Uh, oh, okay, okay. right. Um, yeah. That is something we are supposed to do, aren't we? Yeah, I think we are supposed to do, and I think actually... One, two... Uh, it's in favor of Brown Boy. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is a bison hunt that that is missing for a ghost. Um, well, I think it might be. You see the trading route there, right? There's like one bison yeah. spawned. It. I think that might be the one that's supposed to be close to his base, but it isn't. Yeah, it's kind of brown boy has his um, his hunts closing his base now. Sure, he heard it that. This one, he heard it. This one, he is hurting now. And, uh, yeah, well, but there's three hunts in his base already, and uh, ghost only one, and... I don't know. I let you decide, basically. <laughs> yes. I think it's uh, it's Bramboy favorite a little bit. This is, of course, one of the downside to these new maps. I'm very unfamiliar with them. Yeah, and we did not pay attention in the beginning, so... No, I didn't see where this bison herd was. Like, I'm pretty sure that this bison herd is the one that's supposed to be... Closer. No, because there's also a deer spawn over here. This, <sighs> This is weird. Yeah, sorry for this. I completely forgot about checking the hunts. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I would say we, we, we just rehost quick. Because, I mean... What? Yeah, they're... Well, my scocks. Wait, let's see. So, deer... Bison. Is there? Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that. One, two, three, four, five, nine. 
Yeah, so the, this bison in the bottom right is absolutely just one of the four bottom herds. It just happens to be bison for some reason. Which does mean he is missing a bison herd somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Brumboy does have a point. I don't think we can restart now since it's been four minutes. Yeah, actually, that's right. I mean, there's no explicit rule for that, but... Yeah, I mean, he could have scouted, and, and he... If well, he was that's what the SR duty, of course, as the casters, but... Yeah, okay. Wait, no, 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 never mind. I just counted. There's, there's let's see. Yeah, there's there's more bisons in this bottom right. So that's, that's just his bison herd that ran away. Never mind, yeah. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Seems we're fine with that. <laughs> yeah, there's Bromboy advertising StarCraft once more, so very nice for him. And uh, apparently we go on with the game. And, uh, well, yeah, I actually can agree with that. Yeah. What? Which no, he one hasn't heard of Bisons yet. Yeah, on the, on the top he has, on the bottom he hasn't. So, yeah, well, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, well, three hunts in his base, he's hurting three hunts, and uh, well, Ghost is just hurting one, so. I mean, if you split the map in half, is perfectly fair. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should continue though. Yeah. Isn't my first hunt. I mean, we can't rehost just because one hunt is just slightly too far away. Yeah. I mean, it obviously sucks for Ghost, I mean... <laughs> yeah, of course. This now is never sucks, fun, but it, it is in the nature of Age of Empires 3. Yeah, well, he will complain and then, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Only <laughs> Japan. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I can count them again, but one, two, three... <laughs> Four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five. Yeah. There's even hunts on both halves. Yeah, if you split the map in half, it's exactly fine. At least I'm pretty sure that this deer hunt on the bottom side of the map is supposed to be one that's in the middle and counts as uh, a hunt for both players. Yeah, I mean, Biox are, so Prince is saying we should look to the mines, but I mean, uh, yeah, Chrissy, Ghost is pretty fine with hunts. He has three pretty close to his town center. So does Bramboy. 
So the three mines close are are good in my opinion. And yeah, mines are good and hunts are good. I think we should go on. I mean, sure, uh, ghost hunts are a bit, little bit more far away, but uh, yeah, you should. Yeah, I don't think we've ever rehosed for hunts walking away. That would just yeah. be ridiculous. I mean, I, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, I mean, come on. Everyone can make mistakes, and I think, uh, yeah, if he is not happy with his hunt, why is he waiting for five minutes to say something? I mean, the amount of hunts is fair. Uh, he wants a, uh, no, if he has to demand the rehost, it's too late. Yeah, he, he has to do it. Be, be, if he wants to demand it himself, he has to do it before two minutes. Yeah. Well, at least that's the like official ESOC rules. I'm not sure if this tournament follows that as well, but yeah, there's no ex explicit rule on that. But I think we that would agree. I mean, would apply. Come on, I, 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 we should just start. I mean, even chat is saying that the map is fair, and it is. I mean, it's, it's I mean. his starting hunts he's complaining about, so he should see his starting hunts before two minutes, but, you know. Yeah, that should be the case. <laughs> oh, Bramboy with the smack dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's, yeah. okay. <laughs> I think we should uh, we should go we should we should really go on. I mean, we spent ten minutes on that discussion, and the map is fair. <laughs> so, what are we going? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Go I'm waiting for something. these people to unpause. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've counted these hunts a couple of times already. And it, it really doesn't seem that unfair. I mean, obviously, yes. some of ghosts just ran away, which is bad luck, but nothing can be done about that, really. Yeah. I mean, if anything, this hunt for ghost is favorable to Bramboy's version of that hunt, so... It yeah, really isn't that bad. He also could start hurting back this one, so I mean, yeah, it's close. of course, he is going to need to hurt a lot more, yeah, uh, than Bramboy due to yeah, his I mean, running away, which is annoying. I checked. This hurt here was here, so he hurt it just. Uh, I think, yeah, it's fine. We we should just move on. Yeah, I think this is the, the bison herd or the muskox, whatever you want to call them, that was supposed yeah, exactly. to probably spawn somewhere over here for um for ghost. But yeah, it happens. Yeah. Four CDB as the first colonial shipment for ghost, three settler wagon, first shipment for brown boy. Very, very standard stuff. So uh, I... With these current bolts, I would imagine that both players are just going to go for some sort of semi-FF. Although Bramboy is getting a second training post, which is interesting. I'm not sure if that was yeah, standard exactly. play for Germany in the previous version of the patch. Of course, training posts are just really, really good. So <laughs> It might just be an adaptation uh, to the training post meta. Some Uland coming in here. Let's see if they can get a CDB. CDB don't have melee resist, of course, so they might be able to get something here. Yeah, and this CDB is yeah, really gonna go I... down. And that can be very painful. Losing a CDB just for free like that. He doesn't even pick up the Yule on kill. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this is smart. I mean... Oh, yeah, for you, sure. Yeah. But, well... <laughs> Against German Uhlans. Oh, look at this hurt, musketeer no. firing line. Oh, they didn't catch the Uhlans. <laughs> he actually has to be careful because he's now scaring the Uhlans into his villager. <laughs> Why is he hurting this deer herd toward Bramboy's base? I don't know. <laughs> oh, he totally should have taken that CDB and just killed every single bison in this pack. Just for the lols. Just for the rage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can you imagine how how like frustrating that must be? And Brombo is yeah. going to fortress, so. Yeah, ghost following up. I think. I mean. Yeah, uh, he's certainly saving for fortress. Waiting he's probably for waiting the for the coin gold. shipment. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I see some walls going up for him actually. Yeah. I, I really it's like maps with like small a small choke point like this. It's just so nice yeah. to have a, a safe place to wall off in your base. And now those who are, are gonna, those Ulans are gonna have to walk around. Or you know, just siege down this wall because this patch nerfed walls. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people disagree with me on that. <laughs> Yeah, this is of course very annoying because this CDB, even though he was able to save it by running it all the way over here, it does mean that he can no longer hurt this unless he sends another CDB to go there, which yeah. so far he hasn't done yet. Exactly. And he's running out of hunts in his base, so... Ooh, the Ulan getting caught a bit here, though. And one goes down. And the other ones are... Well, one of them at least is relatively low on HP as well, so that's a bit annoying. <laughs> the scout's having a bit of a standoff here. And he even builds a gate <laughs> to save his scout. Wow. I'm not sure if that's worth the 50 wood, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, having a scout is always nice, I guess. <laughs> oh, look at the card that Bramboy just chipped. Oh, and there's Fusiliers! And Jaegers, wow. <laughs> Let's see which of those he is preferring. The Jaegers, it seems. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna enjoy this gendarme that's in queue for a ghost when he pumps out Jaegers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's gonna have a good time with that. Let's yeah. see if these five Yulan can kill some more villagers here. I think I might get one CDB here just because of how much damage Yulan do. Yeah, he gets one. Exactly. 1,000 coin being shipped by Brambo. He's really going quite heavy on the mercenaries here. Yeah, it does really look like that, and that's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is, but these Jaegers are not gonna have a good time against the French cavalry. Though it is only three gendarmes, well, cuirassiers, I guess. Uh, but he also ships three, and where are those three? Or are those the... Yeah, the, the ones in the stable are still being built, so... He's yeah, gonna have exactly. eight cuirassiers at least. Yeah, and the only pure, unit that Germany yeah. has is Ulans and Jaegers at the moment, and Chris here is kind exactly. of beat us not out of both of those. <laughs> and more Jaegers in queue, actually. Oof. This is gonna be painful for Bramboy, I think. Although, of course, these Ulans are buying him so much time. Let's see if he can get that CDB. No, he can't. Uh, spoiler, Chris here is do quite a bit of damage. <laughs> yeah, and Ghost yeah, is just stuck do. in his base, trying to defend these Ulan raids. Let's yeah, see. It. Yeah, he is, he is heading in Fusiliers now, but I don't think Fusiliers are actually that good against Cuirassiers. Even though they count as Musketeer units, a lot of their item bud or item budget, um, resource budget isn't to the movement speed, of course. They are extremely yeah. speedy. And the, the Cuirassiers are pushing out, and I'm not sure if these Fusiliers are going to be enough and in time, because this is 8 Cuirassiers. That's so much hit points. That's yeah, 4, I mean, 4,000 hit points worth of cavalry. And, yeah, in the meantime, those three Yulans. Oh, yeah, okay. So many CDBs going down, and Ghost still hasn't even noticed. Yeah, oh, I mean, painful. it's five, six. And, okay, I mean, one point of having Hans far is, of course, that the Yulans are all over the map. That's true. That's very unfortunate, but those CDB he lost were in his face. And look at that. 
even even the shipments here. So yeah, Rambo doesn't see it, but yeah, and like yeah, he did do a lot of damage there. But the problem is he also needs to not die here. And there we go. The yeah. prisoners are on the Jagers. Oh, That's very nice of him. Look at them lose hit points. I mean, a lot of the, yeah. the cursors are going down to TC fire and such, but let's take a look at units lost. And not that many villagers lost, and no settler wagons lost yet. But still, the, the, these cursors have a lot of hit points left, the remaining three. And we might see some of these settler wagons go down here. He is smartly yeah. redirecting himself onto the villagers instead of going for the Jaegers. But no settler wagon lost, uh, so good for him. No, but good a lot somebody. of villagers dying, though. Yeah, yeah, but there's. Eight villages, nine villages down for uh, German, and but six Corriere de Bois for France, so... Yeah, but Germany is not making units at the moment. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not and a very France good thing, And France still has a lot of stuff. Oh, I'm not sure why he's actually pulling out here. I guess he can't know, but Bram is in a really dangerous position at the moment. He went for this mercenary strat, but look at his coin mine. It's all the way over here. Yeah, I mean, he has one in his base, but it's basically gone and 700 coin left here. But then, yeah, I mean, he's going for Merce, but uh, he's getting, he was getting more. Ooh, there's the coins, Black Riders, but... though. Yeah. But there is, okay, there's actually a lot guys. of skirmishers here now, and I'm not sure if these Black Riders yeah. are going to be enough. He needed those Black Riders when the, the, the Corsairs pushed in. Now. Ooh, and just look at these villagers going down. They are yeah, taking so much splash so damage. Oh, it's, yeah, 16 villagers down now for Germany, so yeah, German people is gonna have uh, a hard time here. And he still has no income. Every single villager is in the town center. Yeah, I mean, sure, these Black Riders are powerful, and yes, they have the card. They're doing insane amounts of damage and are very tanky. And uh, 9 Ulans, maybe this can save him because the Dragoons are a bit out of position. But this is still so bad for Germany. Ghost is buying himself so much time and he's not getting raided in the meantime. Yeah, that's that's what he wants. I mean, his hunts were far away. Okay, we got that. But now he's keeping the German plane busy. So, uh, yeah. And the Corsairs do go down finally, but France is just happily gathering this entire time. Just yeah. bumping out units. Meanwhile, Bram is just struggling to get enough coin to get these very expensive yeah. mercenaries and he still has no military units in queue. He has 17 villagers on gold, no on food. Ah, um, uh, Ghost needs to stop trying to chase these black riders, just go for the villagers that are gathering coin. Yeah, I mean, he needs to start him out and uh, a few low hit point settler wagons too. Mm, very nice too. Ooh, there is the 8 wool on shipment down, nice. and this might be enough to hold hurt. because the Dragoon count has been whittled down by the town center fire. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Goes very smartly though, focusing his skirmishers on the Black Riders. He wants those things gone so that his cuirassiers can come back and yes. uh, work. And the Black Riders do go down, and there's still so many skirmishers alive, even though Ulans do so much damage. Yeah, I mean. Look at the score even, I mean, goes 100 score now, and uh, yeah, he managed to hurt, He's, he found this hunt here, Yeah, so. Bram has no reinforcements coming, and just look at the skirmisher reinforcements, yeah. and Bram does call GG. Yeah, well, nice game, nevertheless, there was a little bit of a discussion in the beginning about the hunts, that's kind of our fault, we maybe should have had a look a little bit faster, I guess, but uh, nevertheless, the game turned out to be, I mean, Ghost played accordingly, he tried to Yeah, he push adapted out very nicely. Boss. He ad adapted very good, and yeah, as... Great I guy really like this tower says, mate in the bottom like... right, that's just so smart, whenever you have poor hunts, like, yes, yeah. it's 250 wood, but this is just so valuable. This helps yeah, you I so mean, much. He, he played accordingly to his situation, and that's what the strategy game is about, apparently. So he did very well, adapted very well, and yeah, nice game. Yeah, just look at the military population. Grava just says it all. Those cuirassiers, 
There were only Jaegers. They are so expensive. They could take up a lot of population and just look how they got absolutely slaughtered. And then the Black Riders come and it's like this huge power spike that Bram has. But it doesn't matter because the skirmisher reinforcements just kill everything and Bramboy just slowly gets absolutely wrecked. This is of course yeah, a danger exactly. of mercenary strats. Like yes, Jaegers and Fusiliers, they are extremely powerful. But if you go pure Jaeger and your opponent just randomly shows up in your base with eight Chris, Chris, blah, 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 <laughs> Yeah, hard to pronounce those, those good, good French names. That's why I call them gendarmes usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if they are not gendarmes yet. So I'm out of here and. Uh... Ah, you were ah no post game for you. Okay, I thought you were talking about the post game. So, <laughs> so well, we have Ghost taking up the series two to one. So we have one other game for sure. Maybe, maybe we go for a tiebreak then. That would be amazing. Five games. And of course, yeah, chat vote, please vote, vote fast, vote straight. Don't vote maps that has already been voted. So that. They are not in the pool anyway, so... Oh, I see some 11s! I want some 8s. I want some 8s. I want, I want a vote. Vote 8. Uh, 8 I is also a nice map. Florida, Florida is, is one I, I enjoy as well. Yeah. I really love hope. these maps that have, like, the option to go water. But, like, you also don't need to. Yeah. Cough, cough, Indonesia. <laughs> I also love Indonesia, <laughs> yeah, don't get okay, me wrong. Yeah. But, like, I can understand that people dislike those maps because they are obviously somewhat skewed towards water. But things like Hudson Bay and Florida, uh, Manchuria as well, I just really like those maps. I personally find them very well balanced. And you have yeah. the way of uh, going water if you need to. The game is up, by the way, so you can join. <laughs> Uh, okay, no invite for me today. He's angry because he lost. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, we, we have someone cheering for Ghost here, uh, Orgy1234, whispering me that he doesn't have a Twitch <laughs> account, but he wants to cheer for Ghost, so he uh, he did it through Whisper. <laughs> yeah, Apparently he's from the same smart. country as that person. Kinda that's kind of smart. So we have a winner, and it's Hudson six. Bay. Nice. Nice, nice clean map. Standard. Oh no, it's not standard, but it's all almost standard. Uh, Hudson Bay is one of the standard maps, I'd say. It's been in the pool practically since forever. Especially if you count Saguenay, which is basically what Hudson Bay is based on. So yeah, this is game four. It is currently two to one in favor of Ghost. And Bramboy will have to pick first here. Bramboy picks first, exactly, because it's alternative picking. So Bramboy is gonna start. And Indonesia a day keeps the Iroquois away. <laughs> so well, they have to resist civilization, of course. They Rambo can play France. Ghost can't because he was France in the last game, so This also makes me think that there's not going to be any water, sadly. <laughs> Unless Bramboy does some really strange thing with France. I don't, I don't think I've... Wait, no, I saw Kinesi go France once on water. And he did a fast Imperial with Chandarms. I think I've also seen Breeze Brothers go water with France a couple of times. Mm. 
So yeah, Bram is picking French here, so we'll have to see how Ghost007 responds to this. Uh, there is of course TPs on this map, so... Most likely Bramboy is going to go for some sort of stagecoach plan. Or maybe just a normal TP during transition semi-fast fortress uh, style of build. Yeah, so brown boy clicking in with France. Yeah. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. Most, of course, cannot pick um, France or Japan or India because or those India. are the sifts he exactly. played before. Bram boy, well. of course, copy pastaing random memes. <laughs> yeah, probably. And it seemed that we're going to have the same matchup as previous game, but just flipped around. Yeah, so now we have to pay attention to the hunt. <laughs> Even it shouldn't be too far away. <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, Germany can go water, but... Um... <laughs> Yeah, I I don't think that's very. I think they like to do that much. So <laughs> I want to see a France versus German water mirror or not water mirror, but uh, water <laughs> fight. I mean, just two sieves that don't really go well on water and just like see to try to pull them off. See them try to pull it off. Could be hilarious. But anyway, uh, this is of course still the ESO Insight Productions New Year's tournament. Round of 16? Something along those lines? Oh yeah, that's the nice intros. Oh, so, so I have to listen carefully. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna watch some people kill each other. And that's yeah, great. That's nice. As long as it's, of course, <laughs> on the internet and not in real life. Yeah, on the other side, we got kinda, uh, I don't wanna watch that. On Hudson Bay, in the left side of the map, we have in the color blue, of course, Mr. Bramboy playing as French. Why am I drag boxing around his TC and villagers? It's to because emphasize my point that this, <laughs> this town center is in fact Mr. Bramboy. Well, <laughs> in the right on the map, in the color green, we have Ghost007 playing as the Germans. While in the top of the map, we have Beluga the Whale. He is a very nice guy. He is a very nice guy. He's going to give those guys who are going to fish him a lot of coin. But probably we don't going to see that. I, we don't see that, I guess. So let's check the hunt. So one hunt close for this guy. One hunt close in the back. One hunt close. One hunt close. So, yeah. yeah seems fair to me. Hunts are fine. Yeah, hunts are fine. Uh, I suppose you could say that... Like, um, the third and fourth hunt are a bit closer for Ghost. Yeah, but... but they are all there, and them. that's what matters. Yeah, and he is not going to be able to go hunt those things till his town center. So, the close hunts are those who matters, and these guys are going to go far away now. So, if he's complaining later, they went away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, one thing Bram that's maybe a bit unfavorable for Bramboy is this one, but just as I ping it, you can see they just randomly walk towards yeah. him. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's because Bramboy is very attractive. Hunts are fine, and I'm going to immediately declare it in the chat as well that we don't have complaints. Hunts are fine. So, no yeah. whining this <laughs> game. Uh, oh, mines. Uh, what about um, mines? Of course, he whines about mines because he's in Germany now, but mines are fine too, in my opinion. Are even, uh, mines are even better for... Uh, I mean, this man is maybe a little bit in an unfortunate position. It would have been better if it was behind the town center, but there... Yeah, I, I mean, don't think we ever 
ever rehost it for a mine being in front of the town no, center. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, the distance is the distance is good, and that's yeah. only thing they could argue about. <laughs> Still going to bow pike. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Bramboy starting so with the market. Uh, so yeah, I think we actually both players doing the exact same bolt they did last game, but just in reverse. Yeah, well, I think I mean, this TP was earlier than the one Bramboy got in the previous game. That could... Uh, yeah, that's for sure, because uh, Bramboy got it all, only in the transition. Yeah, I guess it was just a higher wood start. Yeah, that could be. We missed that. We can't get everything. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be very nice. Oh, 90 wow. food. Look so, at this as well. Both players getting a very yeah. nice treasure. 100 wood. <laughs> 12 10 bow pipe. 12 10 x bow pipe. Here I come. Yeah. Of course, we can already see that it's absolutely not the case. <laughs> Also, I'm pretty sure that Bramboy's deck does not look like a Bow Pike deck at all. <laughs> <laughs> game 5. So, people are already gonna talk about Game 5. So, yeah, that's completely it's Bow Pike. I, I mean, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what's going on? What do you expect? Do we probably gonna expect? Well, I'm not expecting mercenaries because sides. there is no mercenary cards in the deck for Ghost. <laughs> yeah, so maybe Germany can do something, unlike in the other game. <laughs> yeah, I just think that both players are going to semi FF. It's by far the most standard thing for both these sifts to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? No snare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the native scout okay. did get nerfed in this patch, of course. Yeah, so no snare for him, so he can't slow enemy nearby units he is attacking. And, uh, well, of course, that helps a lot. The opponent it is. <laughs> it doesn't help French that much. <laughs> so, well, nice hunts in his base, so... <laughs> yeah, the scout is not supposed to snare in the EP. I'm pretty sure Bramboy is trolling here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bramboy ex actually very in troll mode lately, so doing some fun uh, mercenary stuff. <laughs> so half-hearted mercenary stuff. I don't think he was very convinced to do that, because I don't know. <laughs> I feel Could like Bramboy is better. just trying to make Ghost tilt a bit here. <laughs> yeah, to make him angry. But Ghost is staying, keeping, staying on his line, doing his stuff, doing it very well, and keeping up. So. And he did see. add in the market as well, and he has hunting dogs already, and let's see if he's getting more. Yeah, he is getting the place reminds Bramboy getting the steel trap, so very, very normal exactly. stuff. Both players wanting just that little bit. Of yeah, extra and economy at the small investment price, of course. Of yeah, the, we see a little, rates. a small little difference. We have a stable start for France here, and not a Rex start. And in the game before, we had the ghost going for a Rex start against Germany. Of course, there you can argue that you can defend better against raids, maybe when you have musketeer. But uh, with the Hussar, you have for sure mobility on the map, which isn't bad either. Yeah, so, the Hussars just oh. give you so much more map presence. Yeah. So Exact same shipment progress valuable. as the previous game. Both civs, of course, having these very powerful villager shipments. France with the CDBs basically getting 3.75 villagers in age 1, while Germany yeah. getting 4. Exactly. And even 6 villagers plus Ulans in H2, just such a strong shipment, the 3 settler wagon one. Yeah, and the fact that those Ulans come, that just gives Germany so much more map presence early on. That's Oh, 700 nice. wood for France actually, so probably one thing to add in like a barracks and a couple of houses perhaps. Mm. Maybe some more market upgrades, or maybe he's just actually going both bike, who knows. <laughs> I doubt it though. 700 wood for Germany as well. 
probably the same thing. Some more upgrades, couple of houses, maybe a barracks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Getting his infrastructure going with the 700 wood shipment. That's uh, yeah, both players actually, as you said. Yeah, it looks like that if Ghost is gonna wanna age, he's probably gonna wanna age naturally, like gathering the resources at least. Yeah, it certainly like looks like Ghost is intending to just go to Fortress with this one batch of Ulan that he got out. Yeah, exactly. He has to be careful for this Hussar though, because Hussar actually really beat Ulan quite hard. Yeah, they have more HP, they have slightly less attack, but uh, not enough to compensate. HP it's, yeah, the HP is so much more. Oh, and did he but actually those queue up more Ulans? Because I did see his coin drop, but yeah, he did queue up an extra yeah. batch of Ulans, so... He has like uh, 10 Ulans on the field now, and uh, it's gonna... Gonna clean up Ooh, the... Oh, and he those. snared the Hussar, so he might get both Hussar yeah. if he micros it correctly. Yeah, and he does get a second one with a snare. Yeah, but... Oh, but one of the Settler Wagons goes down! No, wait, never mind, it's a normal villager. That no, was it, hiding it, it in the Settler Wagon. was a Settler. Let's see, are both players going for more military units? Yeah, Brumboy is getting an extra batch of Hussars, but Ghost is going to go to Fortress here, it seems. Yeah, and gonna Ooh, trap and he those entraps hussars. these Hussars here, very nice. Yeah. yeah Does he get the snare? Maybe, barely not, maybe, barely not. Ooh, Brum yeah. building one back, but the two of them are separated, oh, can he get a snare? Very close, very no, close, very close. that's he very nice run away. play by Brumboy there. Yeah, he could run away, very close, actually. Nice, and nice, Ghost nice, is going nice. to Fortress here. Bramboy is going to follow soon. Both of them shipping the 700 coin to get to that Fortress a bit easier. The Hussar getting yeah. trapped anyway because for some reason Bramboy sent them back into their deaths. <laughs> yeah, but this actually means that... Ooh, one CDB goes down. Maybe a second one here? Oh, and if these ones yeah. can circle around and entrap these, that might be very bad for Bramboy. No, but he puts them in the TC. A lot of Ulan dying yeah. here, and this is actually something that Germany doesn't really want to happen because once he gets the veteran Ulan upgrade, all of these would have become so much more powerful, but now a lot of these might die and get injured. Yeah, but still, I mean, seven Ulans lost for... Uh, for uh, eight Ulans lost for Germany and seven uh, Hussar lost for France, so it's yeah, kind of even... Yeah, three CDBs lost for France, so I, I'd say that yeah, still that's is kinda worth huge. it. Even though you lose the, the veteran upgrade on a lot of these Ulans, you just got three CDB and pretty much yeah, the entire exactly. French army. Like, France has the exact same thing. He wants to get better in Hussar and, you know, he just lost his Hussar. Also, something to keep in mind that from those Ulans that Germany lost, like, four of those were kind of free because they come with the shipments. No, yeah, actually, six exactly. of them, never no, mind. No yeah, six free Ulans. Yeah. No Whereas the Hussar that Bramboy lost, yeah. all of them were trained. Yeah lot of more resources and yeah this poor Courier de Bois French guy is gonna die to those Hulans probably uh, maybe they don't see time. it no yeah no, they knows. saw him so yeah well ah, actually he's the gonna save are them. there so he might be able yeah. to save it they do a bit of bad buffing lucky on the guy bus lucky box. guy yeah he's gonna Ooh, go he's land the to turn around yeah, he's gonna go light a candle somewhere and uh, be happy Ooh, to and, see the Yeah, alliance. Brambo immediately getting the veteran Hussar upgrade. Well, Ghost has yeah. not yet gone for the veteran Ulan. Well, he might actually be going for Skirmisher War Wagon here. Yeah, and in this case, I don't know. Well, I it's going to pay like off the with the much. amount of Hussar that Brambo is getting here, and War Wagons are yeah. really good against Hussar. <laughs> yeah, that is, I mean. Very beefy dragoons that move kind of. They move in a strange in a strange way though. So. Yeah, they have the same speed, but well, not the same speed. They, I think, they have the same as hussars. Oh, actually, no, they're even slower yeah. than that. Wow, they're actually really slow. Never mind. Yeah, wargans are just really slow and bulky. <laughs> yeah. And they also yeah, have this they, really they awkward bump. turning animation, which gets them stuck on units all the time. But their stats yeah, are exactly. just really, really strong. More war wagons coming out and a couple of Ulans from the shipment, of course. And it seems that Ghost actually feels comfortable pushing out here. And if you look at the military unit population, he is absolutely right to feel that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, 19 skirmisher for uh, for Ghost. Yeah, and they are mm. absolutely going to clean up those dragoons left. And yeah, uh, Brahma the is only wagons. just now starting his skirmisher production. He doesn't even yeah. have a badge, oh, I think. But his only skirmishers, skirmishers are from... Um, 
Caught a little bit out of a position here. That's unfortunate for him. Yeah, it's actually really lucky for Brambo. But Brambo is not going to yeah, have it's... any skirmishers besides the one from the shipments. So he is relying yeah, purely it's... on Hussar to beat the skirmishers of Ghost. But Ghost has a lot of war wagons here. And this is not looking good for Bramboy. I mean, just look at these war wagons. 500 hit points and 42 ranged attack. With a yeah. times 3 against <laughs> cavalry. These hussars are gonna get melted. He needs to be careful that the skirmishers don't get free shots on the war wagons, though. And yeah, here we yeah, can see just the popping issues of these war wagons. And, and goes. He knows he can't fight under that DC. His war wagons have yeah. no range resist, so they take a lot of damage. He just needs to starve Bramboy out. He knows on this map that you only have three huns that are really in your base in a safe place. So he just exactly. needs to hold these positions. And then yeah, Bramboy and... just can't do anything. Exactly. At some point, uh, Bram has to go out on the map to go for the resources. And double stable. Look at that. So he's not training any skirmishes, basically. And going for full Dragoon. So, I yeah, don't know I guess Bramboy was just that. really expecting a lot of Ulans from Germany. Yeah. And... Ooh, this is bad though. Where are the War Wagons? Yeah. And yeah, now there actually are a lot of Yulans, so he, he doesn't need to be careful with these Yulans. Are they veteran already? No, they're not. They are not veteran yet. Yeah, exactly. So they die pretty fast, and now the skirmish account is kind of even. It's, uh, uh, the thing is though, Bram still Bram can't make skirmishers. Eight. Every skirmisher yeah. that Bram loses is just so valuable. It's he painful. needs to protect exactly. these. Exactly, it's very painful for him. These war wagons just getting stuck on everything. This is of course the problem with war wagons. Yes, they are extremely strong, but they are just so goddamn immobile. They just refuse yeah, to go Yeah, look at this. I mean, they, they just run around those trees, and yeah, it's not what this, this fight is. Ooh, the Ulans might well connect though with dragoons here, snaring Bram. them, which is really bad. Yeah. And Bram calls GG. Yeah. I, wow. Yeah. Okay. The fight was in. Yeah, okay, he was losing the fight, but... Yeah, and I, I think the main problem he resigned is because of what's going on here with the CDB. As you can see, they are out of hunt completely. Brom has no one yeah. left. Yeah, he exactly. But sa sad thing is, I mean, good for Ghost. He took the series, but we have no more games left. Yeah, here. this was the final game, of course. Ghost winning the series 3-1. to one. But let's yeah, very, just quickly take nice a look play. at the post-game, of course. And yeah, Brambo actually outgathering Ghost throughout the entirety of that game, but he just ran out of Huns and he could not get out on the map. Ghost surprising yeah. him with no Ulans at all until he got the free ones from his shipments, not making any yeah. or barely making any, not even getting the veteran upgrade, just going for straight skirmisher war wagon. And Brambo just could not respond to that. He tried some veteran hussars, but the war wagon's just doing so much damage to them. And then he had exactly, no skirmishers, yeah. he had no barracks, he could not make skirmishers. He could only get 15, 8 and then 7 from his shipments. And he, he migrated them really well. He didn't lose them until that final fight where he was forced to fight to get the hunt. Exactly. But it wasn't and enough. Goes being able to both ship the same 15 skirmishers and just also making about 4 or 5 batches throughout that game. Just being able to just pressure Brum really hard. And then if we yeah, look at the military population graph, you can just really see that. Like the first fight that they have, which is uh, the one with the Ulans in the base, where he picks up some CDB and Hussar. Like you can see that Ghost loses a lot there actually. But most of that is actually Ulans that he got for free from his shipments in H2. And he's picking up like 3 CDB I think it was, and 7 Hussar. And as you can see, that just exactly. makes it so that Bramboy exactly. only has equal army when they are in the Fortress Age and getting their things. And in the first fight... You can see that Bramboy actually is behind on army, and if he had, hadn't lost those 7 Hussar that Ghost got with that initial pressure in H2 with the free Ulans from his shipment, then Bram, this might have looked a lot different. If there were 7 veteran Hussar in that fight, those skirmishers might not have been able to... Um, or rather, the war wagons might not have been able to protect the skirmishers as much as they yeah, did. Yeah, exactly, because like more cavalry would have been on the field and stuff like that. And uh, 
very very smart played with the with the Yulans with uh, catching all the the hussar as you said. I mean the, this slight military advantage who costed Bram uh, the disadvantage who cost the Bram three Corée de Bois was I think it was uh, yeah pretty awesome for for German yeah, and for then. Sure. Of course, always keeping the military lead and the better composition in the end. I mean, uh, he had uh, basically skirm goon, uh, but with very, very, very low skir skirmish count. So yeah. And in the skirm goon mirror, of course, what matters is the skirmishers. The goons are just there to protect your skirmishers in the case of an eventual hussar switch, or in the case exactly. of Germany, an Ulan switch. And Brom just was expecting. Just tons and tons of Uhlans, which is why he went to double stable Dragoon build. And normally Germany goes extremely heavy on the Uhlans. But goes yeah, just but... maybe predicting it, maybe just it's how he likes to play Germany. We yeah, can't know maybe for he's sure, but the doing a surprise stable. Skirm yeah. war wagon, which is not something we see very often. And Bram just being taken by surprise by it, being very poorly prepared for it. I mean, who can blame him? It, it's not something we see often. I, I personally haven't seen it ever, I think. A dedicated Skirm War Wagon build is just not something I see yeah, often. But still a double stable, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is bold, very risky, kind of course, of but if you do catch your opponent going very heavy on the Ulans, you can just destroy them with that build, I would imagine. Yeah, but you can't, uh, you can't adapt that well, I mean... Yeah, that's of course, you don't have a barrack, yeah. so you can never get more Skirmishers out. Exactly. And it's, as you said, it's that skirmish count you want to keep up, so... Yeah, but um, yeah, that will be it that. for today, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think we have any other games planned, so... No, Thank you, I everyone, so. for watching, and we hope to see you next time. Yeah, and we have Ghost advancing to the round of eight, and we will face Hadza, five, four, three, two, one. That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, and like this has been, of course, the sure. ESO Insight Invitational New Year's Tournament Round of 16 stuff. Yeah, you get better 3. every time. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. See you next time. Yeah, ciao, chat. Thank you very much for watching, and have fun. Enjoy.